You join a new company or maybe a new team as a software developer or engineering manager. On your first day, you look at GitHub to check the code and you realize immediately that it's terrible. There are absolutely no standards. There's no consistency. There are no tests. The CVI pipelines do basically nothing. Your first reaction? I've made a huge mistake. And don't worry, today I will give you five tips on how to improve code quality in a project, especially as a new person in the team. Number one, be patient. It is very easy to join the project and immediately start criticizing the code base and refactoring everything. But that's a big mistake because other people in the team don't trust you yet. If you want to help the team to improve the code quality, first you need to build that trust. If you start criticizing everything, then people will label you as a toxic or very negative developer and it's hard to change that first impression. Also, as a new person, you have no context. You don't know why the code is so bad. Maybe nobody in the team knows better, but maybe people know that it's terrible, but they never had a chance to do it, right? Because of deadlines, the micromanagers, maybe the team leader doesn't care about the quality. There might be different reasons. So first understand the context gain trust and then start improving the quality. The time to build trust also depends on your position. If you join the team as an engineering manager, then you have certain authority to introduce changes. If you join as a lead developer, similarly. If you join as a senior, probably there are some peers of you in that team and you need to make sure that they trust you. If you join as a mid-level or junior developer, I'm sorry to say, but you're probably screwed because senior developers in that team will take a long time to trust you and probably they will still believe that their ideas are much better than yours. Number two, be an example to follow. Make sure that the code that you write is of good quality. Keep it consistent, keep the formatting properly, write tests, refactor small things here and there, leave the code better than you found it. When people trust you and they see that you do a good job, they will try to improve. They will try to, you know, to reach that bar that you set. So make sure that whatever you do is of good quality so that others can see it and then they can try to match that level. They can improve their skills, then can, they can improve their code to match the bar that you set. Number three, get buy-in from others. You can't improve the whole code base alone. That's why the trust in your team is very important so that other people can see that the code improvements make sense. But besides your team, probably also need buy-in from other people. So maybe your team lead or your manager, maybe CTO if you work in a small company, or maybe even some non-technical manager. Maybe there's some project manager and you need to explain them that better code quality will allow you to move faster once you improve the basics, that you will limit the number of bugs in production and eventually you will increase the customer satisfaction. From my experience, it's rather easy to get the buy-in from other developers, although occasionally there is someone so negative and defensive that they will try to stick to their poor practices. But if you have the buy-in from other people around, you will make it much easier for the team to get enough time, to get enough resources and education and training so that the overall code quality can be improved. Number four, automate everything. Improving overall code quality in a project is a big thing. It requires a lot of effort, time, and a lot of discipline. Discipline is very hard to maintain. So a good idea is to automate whatever is possible. It's also a relatively low hanging fruit. You do it once and then it will run forever. So you can start by automating uh, linting. You can add some quality checks. You can add some basic metrics to see whether the test coverage is improving or not. Whatever you do, remember not to be too strict with that because it may backfire. I used to work in a project where even if I didn't put a comma after the last element of array, which is totally optional, my build would fail. And that was very annoying because I had to restart the whole pipeline just because of that comma. So make sure to find a balance so that that automation is helpful and not annoying. Number five, encourage collaboration. In order to ensure that the newly written code is of relatively good quality, you want to have people collaborating with each other. It can be done in a number of ways. For example, code reviews are a very common and very good practice that I talked about uh, some time ago. But code reviews can be done in a very good or very bad way. So when you introduce this practice, 
make sure that people actually check the quality of the code. That code review is not limited to just clicking approve five seconds after the request was created. Code reviews also can be done together, so that instead of exchanging messages on GitHub, you can just sit down together, go through the code line by line and do it faster. Similarly, you can do some pairing sessions. Pair programming or mob programming is one way to write better code. Another one is pair design sessions, so that you do not write code together, but you discuss different solutions and you choose the one that eventually will be implemented. Collaboration will not only help to improve the code quality, but also it will help developers to learn from each other. So every time people collaborate, every time people do something together, each of them is learning a little bit more, so they become better programmers. That collaboration initially might be seen as a bit of a waste of time because two people work on one thing, but in the long term it's very, very valuable. As part of collaboration, you can also introduce some trainings. I did it a number of times when I was a developer and it was very, very effective. Every time the other developers learn something new, they ask good questions. We also discussed some practices, what is better, what is not, and we agreed on improving our code base further. This kind of collaboration may be seen as a bit of one way thing that one person teaches the others, but in practice it results in discussion, lots of communication, and it is really a good team building exercise as well. And now one more thing, focus on big picture. Imagine that you're sitting in a boat that is sinking. What should you do first? Instead of trying to get out the water, you should first fix the leak. You should make sure that water is not getting into the boat anymore before you take care of the water that's already in the boat. That's what you do with the five tips that I gave you above. Once you implement them all, then you will ensure that the newly written code is better than it used to be. Now that you took care of that, you can think about the bigger picture and the whole project and how to improve the already existing code base. This is complex because maybe you need to change the whole architecture. Maybe you need to start extracting services from the monolith. Maybe you need to merge a bunch of applications into one. So it's very hard to give a specific advice. But now that you know that whatever code is being written will be at least of a decent quality, you can look at the big picture and think and discuss with your team how to approach the quality of the code that is already there. Before we wrap up, let me just tell you that a success in improving code quality is not guaranteed. There are situations, there are companies, there are teams that have no interest in code quality. They have no interest in doing a better job in writing better code. In that case, if you keep pushing, you will just burn out. Your efforts will be wasted. And probably if you're passionate about the code quality, if you want to do a good job and you see that this environment is not right for you, you should just leave. Change the team, change the company. Life is too short to deal with terrible code and people that are happy with writing terrible code. And that's all for today, folks. I hope to see you next time and take care.